you know, COVID in isolation has created social distance, but also commercial distance. And so it was kind of inevitable that, you know, video was going to come to the fore right now be the mechanism that we use to communicate internally with our own teams, but also probably the most uh, engaging form of content that we have to be able to maintain connection with our clients. If you're thinking about staying connected to your customers, your video strategy, you know, if you don't have a, a good one in place right now, you're probably in a little bit of deficit scrambling because video is just table stakes now. People are going to be looking for richer experiences is, is my belief. And interactive video is the obvious way, a gateway of experience for a brand, for a small business, even within the way that you engage internally. You have to be able to use emotive cues to engage people. In the next couple of weeks, we'll all really, really get tired of this, this Zoom status quo. It's just gonna, oh my God, not another Zoom, not another dude doing a video from his kitchen. You know, brands need to seriously think about that. They need to think about how they're going to build some experience into their customer journey. Because customer journey is now pretty much fully digital, right? On that note, I've noticed everybody's releasing their own Zoom backgrounds, including this. Um, <laughs> so, lots of exciting things happening in the video world. That's just making me hungry. It's only breakfast time over here. It's your dinner, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. In the same way as you're suggesting with interactivity, it's always been the thing that people want to do versus have to do. These situations we're encountering are saying, we need to do this now because we can't make video content as easily. Even before that, I'm still really questioning whether it is a good use of time to make more content. Why not spend time making one piece of content that has a real actionable outcome and impact? versus making 100 pieces of content, presenting that urgency to look at what people have and say, how can we make better use of this? But more importantly, why are we making video again? I don't think that question gets asked very often. Being someone that's worked in this industry for about 23 years, to the way that online video has emerged is something that was kind of a nice to have. Didn't really know what the ROI was going to be on it, but I feel like we need to have one. And you know, my competitors got one. Oh, we can shoot our event. We can share a three hour video of our event and people sitting in a room. It's gone from all of that and this place where it was like a, an add-on to core marketing activity, if we talk about in the marketing sense. Organizations, particularly people that are responsible for a long or for video for a long time, have really failed to get buy-in from the whole organization. Increasingly, what you've seen as a result of that video still hasn't really come into its own reckoning yet. A marketer will make a campaign strategy and they'll talk about out of home, various social media placements that they're going to run, all the aspect ratios for those and their carousels and their canvases and all that type of thing. And they're like, oh, and a video. And the thing that happens as a result of that, though, when they look at the ROI, they go, well, shit, they, those videos cost us 30 grand to produce and they only got uh, 150 views. They just don't understand the metric that they're trying to drive at that point and the, and the appropriate ROI that they should be measuring. Trying to get people in the industry to think about metrics, which are not the view. You know, obviously, when you do interactivity, you have what people are interacting with. You have what they are spending time looking at as a result of interacting you can track that behavior and it's behavioral data it's actually very different to somebody watched it to this point which is obviously more or less what you get out of the media industry if people really ask themselves why they're making the video then they can start thinking about the, the metrics that they will track but even if they just think about why are we making video as a strategy I think you can start to then put these tracking points around it because if I ask anybody what's an engagement, that's going to be different to each person, I think, because there's no industry standard. I don't think the media industry, and by that I mean media advertising industry, has really had any pushing to standardise measurements that are beyond views. I don't think the media industry wants to be held to outcomes because that would mean that their creative, which is the fun part, the bit that they really get, a reward out of is the bit that is now held to account for whether it's making a difference in their business. You've got unpacking Pandora's box there, Roo. You have the incumbent advertising system that just wants to turn over money at a, at a rate of knots in this format to just fit our system because it works for us. And so there's no incentive for them to change. It does seem as if people are investing more in their own brand content studios. And 
that is obviously where they do take ownership over those metrics because they matter to that business. Is the advertising agency in danger of making themselves irrelevant? If you're just thinking about video in terms of marketing, you just missed it. You missed the whole point. That's just the front end. It's the value that it adds to the entire experience. Not to just conversion, not to just education, but the whole thing. And if you're doing video well, I think that's the gold standard. The barrier is that there are not enough video champions with enough sway inside of organizations that can articulate the value of the medium in a manner that your marketing people are going to get, in the manner that your CMO needs to get, in the manner that your CFO needs to get, because everybody's just accountable, especially in these large organizations, to you know a metric that's somebody else's. You need a champion to be up for that fight. Well, it requires this restructuring of your organization to really, really do it to the level that you and I hope and aspire that people would be able to execute it and the potential that we see in it. In your new business, you're, as you say, taking forward these learnings to these new businesses and medium businesses that are fighting in a new world. I'm kind of interested to see or hear from your point of view the hypothesis you're working to. My hypothesis is based in my culture, and there is a word in my culture, well, the word is manaki, it's from the Māori culture, and it means to care, it means to give help to, it means to place the care of others above your own, and to look after each other. And in doing that, you uplift the people that you are pushing that out towards. And so my hypothesis is Manaki will win. That's the outcome that I'm pushing towards. How do I fight for my employees? Those are the things that are on my mind. Like I don't want to have to let one person go. My wish is that business owners around the world embrace that because if we shut our doors, if we have to let people go, then you know that's going to affect communities, that's going to affect families. And if this thing goes on longer, we're going to see some major social breakdown. We spun up a platform over the weekend um, here in New Zealand and launched it called Manaki, which is all about putting people in touch with other people, business owners, just to be able to, to talk to. Um, but we're very fortunate that we've got some incredible global business leaders that have lended their hand there. Now, my local Indian uh, takeaways down the road can talk to the guy that runs one of the big major restaurant brands and understand what they could be doing and translate that. One of the things that I'm aware of is that the abnormal is fast becoming the normal. I'm trying to make sure I'm recording my thoughts to make sure that the learnings and the thinking are captured. It could be all too easy for us to forget about these things. And this is a great opportunity to actually build on them. The way that we're thinking now, the way that we're gonna help people now, why isn't this the basis of the new business model? Why is it that we assume that things are gonna go back to normal after this? Why can't this level of care be the basis of the new business model? And perhaps in doing that, we'll present something up to the people that we want to in the future be our clients that is fundamentally different and we'll help them get it to a greater extent. And that way we'll all succeed. Mm -hmm.